Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. You know, every so often, it's great just to find a nice, well-recorded, beautifully played, intelligently interpreted, exciting disc of standard repertoire. You know, because we talk about we talk about historical recordings and huge mega boxes and strange composers and neglected pieces and long series of things like Haydn symphonies. But you know, there, there's there's always time. There always has to be time to talk about the chestnuts, and no composer is more chestnutty than Ravel. And this new disc on Ondine featuring the Basque National Orchestra under Robert Trevino is really hot stuff. Now, I had this teed up. I was going to listen to it myself and then do a review for ClassicsToday.com, but my good friend Victor Carr Jr. beat me to it, and his review is up now on ClassicsToday.com if you'd like to read it. And, and he got me to bumping it up in the pile, and I listened to it, and he thought it was fabulous, and I think it's fabulous, and so I can now tell you about it now. Undine has a relationship with this conductor, Robert Trevino, who's already done a Beethoven cycle for them, perhaps a bit early in his career, but, you know, that's what happens these days, and he's scheduled to do all kinds of cool stuff with this his orchestra. And I think that there's going to be a lot to look forward to here. Ravel, of course, was kind of sort of Basque on the French side, and the notes make much of the Basque connection. Far be it from me to suggest that the Basque orchestra doesn't sound Basques or Basquish or Basquelicious or whatever that is supposed to sound like. I have no idea. What I do know, what I do know is that the music has a certainly, Ravel has his own enormous personality, which was, as far as I'm concerned, just plain Ravel. And this orchestra has a great deal of personality. And Maestro Trevino has a lot of personality. And those personalities mesh very, very well on this well-filled disc containing a bunch of favorites. And because Undine likes me, I can actually play you some samples and you can judge for yourself. But this is really, really exciting stuff, full of color and, and like I said, personality, character. It's what we want these days. We don't want just, you know, jet set similarity from one orchestra to the next. I mean, they all can play fabulously and they can do this stuff in their sleep. But these performances have color and they have distinction. And I'm going to play you a couple examples of it. First, let me just tell you what's on the disc. You get, let's see, in order of, of appearance, Laval's Alborada del Grazioso, Rhapsody Espagnol, Un Barque sur l'Océan, Pavane pour un enfant défunt. You gotta have that, right? You must. And Bolero. Yes, the wonderful, the fun-filled Bolero. Now, let me give you an idea, first of all, of just how excited these performances are. That really is with the opener, Laval's. Now, Laval's, as some of you may know, is a, a, a tone poem slash ballet that depicts a Viennese ball waltzing towards a total, absolute apocalyptic nuclear bombing holocaust. That's what happens. And if the end does not sound like an absolutely apocalyptic, cataclysmic, nuclear bombing holocaust, it's just not worth listening to. There's just no point. And there are so many performances of this thing these days where the conductor just swims around in those waltz rhythms and indulges in rubato and schmoozes and slurps and slimes his way through it only to let you down to the climax, which makes all of the rest of it completely irrelevant and self-indulgent. Well, this is a performance that has its, its element of schmoozing, but Maestro Trevino and the orchestra go for it at the end. And so here is like the last minute or so, and you'll see exactly what I mean. It's a real knockout of a performance, especially when the nuclear bombs are going off at the end. Here you go.
maybe no survivors <laughs> by the time that's over. And that's exactly what you want. And then let's see, what do we have here? Oh yeah, the other example I wanna play is from the Rhapsody Espanol. Now the Rhapsody Espanol, I, you know, I've always found it something of a problematic piece because it's kind of droopy until you get to the very end. So the last movement, you know, it has four little movements. And the last one is the feria, 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 you know, the festival, you know, that thing. And then it really gets hopping. But until then, sometimes it just sounds kind of murky. You know, it begins with the prelude, prelude at night or of the night or in the night or whatever it is, which is dark and nocturnal. And then it sort of wakes up a little. And then there has the habanera thing, right? Which is also very, very subtle. And you want to have you want to have, there's a tremendous amount of delicacy and color in the work. There really is. And you really want a conductor who can bring that out, who can make you listen to even the softest textures and the vivid flashes of light that pop out before you get to the last movement. And this performance really, really does that. I don't know whether you'd call that the Spanish element or the Basque element or, or any of those things but it really sounds great. And that's the point. I'm gonna play you a bit of the Malaguena, the second movement, really, really fabulously touched in orchestral details, done with, with incredible, incredible finesse, but also there's plenty of, of, of warmth and the phrasing and, and generosity of spirit in those lyrical moments that Ravel sort of tucks in between in between the more flickery bits. It's really, really beautifully done. So here you go. It's wonderful. It's just wonderful. And then, of course, you know, Alborada del Gracioso is tons of fun. And this is a nice, rhythmic, very Spanish sounding performance of it. Un barc sur le océan. I love that work. Never gets played. Don't know why. <laughs> it's gorgeous. This is a cool, cool, I mean, cool in a good sense, not cool as in cold, cool as in really beautifully deft. That's a better word, I think. Performance of that. The Pavan is the Pavan. It's unkillable. They don't kill it. Now, Bolero. This is an interesting performance of Bolero. It's it's in a straight middle-of-the-road tempo, about 15 minutes long. Ravel's performance, you may recall, is like 17, and very few performers stretch it out that much. But Trevino and the orchestra do not play it for for the showmanship. This is a very sexy, slinky bolero, and it doesn't become a powerhouse piece until the very, very, very end. Usually when the, the big tune comes back for the last time, that's when everything just sort of opens up, but they don't here. They keep everything very straight and very, very gradually building. And it's only when you get to the key change and the, the final cadence that the full orchestra really rips loose with the whole thing, and it's, it's it's quite effective, but it may surprise you because they're they're not they're not playing it for kicks. It's a very sensuous performance of Bolero. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for its difference and it worked. It's very hard to sound different in and different in a good way, not in a way that just makes you think they're being gratuitous or boring or silly or, you know, whatever they're doing. Very, very interesting performance. And more to the point, it's in keeping with character of the whole recital, which is to give the music all of the color and personality and character that, that it can take. 
And that's just, to me, the right approach. And it justifies yet another recording of these immortal warhorse pieces, um, because everyone's got five or six dozen Ravel discs in their collection, right? Don't you folks? But even if you have a lot of Ravel, you're going to want to add this one, and you're going to want to listen to it, and you're going to enjoy it. I guarantee it. It's really terrific. So the Basque National Orchestra, Robert Trevino on Undine Records, a wonderful Ravel recital, and I really look forward to hearing more from these forces, particularly. I think there may be some good stuff on the horizon. Keep on listening, folks, and we'll find out. Thank you for joining me. Take care.